about access, it's about cost. Uh, and at the heart of it, uh, uh, we are firmly believe, and, and Dr. Lowry called it patient first, we, we call it that relationship between the patient and the provider. And that is the core of, of our healthcare delivery system in the United States. So anything we do in telehealth has to augment that, not replace it, and not, and not necessarily, uh, and certainly not get in the way of it. So this is going to be a whirlwind tour, 15 years journey into telehealth and broadband in 15 minutes. We'll see how well I can do. Some of the things that Dr. Lauer mentioned, but it core to why we did this and why we moved into telehealth. Uh, there's not enough money to do it the way we're doing it today. Uh, and, and probably from a quality perspective, we should change anything. There's not enough providers, both primary care and specialty care, and, and that will continue to get worse. Mercy honestly could not continue to support its mission based on operational revenue. Uh, everybody's done well in the stock market the last six months, eight months, we're doing well in the stock market. I will tell you, if you just look at what we do on operation, we cannot sustain ourselves if we don't change our model of care. ROI, this may be a little technical, but you got to start thinking in managing populations. Therefore, one has to start thinking in how much does it cost you to manage populations. Therefore, one will stop looking at things in silos like, gee, we lose money in primary care. I don't know if there are health system people out there, but that's, that's said like a million times. Nonsense. Uh, you don't lose money through primary care. You actually make money through primary care. But you can't look at it as in a silo. And so we have to do uh, p and m costs and, and revenue models. There has to be collaboration amongst like-minded healthcare providers and systems. That, that, that Mercy and SSM and BJC don't work together in this community uh, is crazy. Uh, and that has to change. And this says down here what you can't see is that we need to pay Hale about a million dollars every month. Now actually, the cultural disparity, uh, honestly, uh, uh, it is 20% of this country does not consider English their primary language. We have to find ways to deliver care. Uh, uh, and virtual remote interpretation is a perfect way to do that. We have a, a clinic in Roosevelt High School here in St. Louis. There are 21 different languages spoken in that high school. Uh, try, to, try to ask somebody about sexual activity, which our nurse practitioner had to do, and you've got to act it out. No, ain't going to happen. <laughs> so we bring from, from remote uh, virtual interpretation to, to assist them. Our, uh, you can't see these very well, uh, but basically our CEO charged us five years ago. We have uh, uh, the benefit of having a tremendous leadership team in Lynn Britton, Mike McCurry, Shannon Sock, and, and uh, Randy Holmes. And they challenged us that we are, it's a statement of intent. We are going to do this in mercy regardless of what the government decides to do, regardless of what the payers decide to do. We're changing our model of care. We're integrating and partnering with physician. We're going to invest in information technology and telemedicine. It's care without borders. I'll show you a map in a minute. And we made a map deliberately because we think of Mercy not as Missouri, not as Arkansas, not as Illinois or Kansas or Oklahoma. It is care without borders. So if the best toologist is in St. Louis and you've got a toe disease in Oklahoma, we will bring the toologist from St. Louis to Oklahoma. If anybody ever needs a toologist, let me know. Coordinated care, make it patient-centric, and it's about leadership and team-based care. I'll show you some of the barriers in the past. Physicians have been put on pedestals. They don't want to be on pedestals. They don't necessarily have to be the leaders of the team. They bring a, a, a tremendous skill set, but so do nurse practitioners, so do nurses, so do techs, so do MAs. It's a, it's a team-based model, uh, and it's about uh, health care, uh, people who deliver health care being the leadership role. So this is Mercy. Uh, you can see that the sisters started in St. Louis. We call them the Route 66 sisters. They ran out of guns at Oklahoma City. The reason why we shouldn't be doing that. We need to build the infrastructure to support the physician. I was one of the liars that went out to my physicians and said we're going to put the electronic medical record in place and it's going to make your life easier. I lied. It makes their life considerably harder. We need to build the infrastructure around that in order to support our physicians and our caregivers because the electronic medical record is better for patients. And it requires a different model of care. It requires team care, collabor collaboration report uh, approach, and innovation, which by definition means change. It doesn't mean invention, it means change. So what does Mercy do today in 
telehealth. We have uh, uh, EICU, you'll hear from Dr. Chris Baramagas and Wendy Piebert. Uh, uh, Chris is our medical director of our EICU efforts in our telehealth, and, and, and Wendy's our vice president of telehealth. We'll talk about uh, what we do today. We're in, in all our states uh, that we are in. We monitor all 450 beds. We now monitor, uh, uh, as of last Monday, three systems uh, outside of our own health system. We'll show you some uh, examples, uh, a little bit about that. We do telesepsis, we do telestroke, uh, we do the consultative point to point. We're fortunate enough actually to have five uh, paternal fetal physicians here in St. Louis at Mercy Hospital. We do the same type of remote care. Uh, at uh, UMAS uh, and does as well. Storing forward images, uh, particularly pediatrics, echoes, EKGs, EEGs, mobile smartphone. There's actually someone here, I think they graduated from St. Louis U. They've sworn a company. They're going to make a spirometry that, that fits into your cell phone. We have a, there's a gentleman out in uh, uh, San Francisco that has put uh, an otoscope fitting into your cell phone. So you take a picture of your child's uh, uh, tympanic membrane in the middle of the night. And, what we need to do is build a support system around that so that can be emailed to a central organization in order to uh, uh, for someone to actually visualize that and then say, yeah, you need to go to the emergency room or no, we'll send out some medicine or you don't have to worry. And then finally in the home over the television set. These are some uh, examples of the of the impact that the EICU has had on the, the uh, uh, your left-hand lower corner here. That's the, the bundle compliance for ventilator-assisted pneumonias. And the results of going down from uh, 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 almost to zero on ventilator-assisted pneumonia is what happens is you actually uh, uh, go down to the, the pupil and see that uh, in a high-definition standpoint. It has all the feeds of all the monitoring that's going on and that I see going to our uh, uh, central monitoring uh, site, which is here in St. Louis uh, at uh, uh, Mercy St. Louis out on Ballas. And it also has a, a, a two-way video so the nurses We'll see the, uh, uh, the physician's face, uh, which we found made a significant impact, by the way, when it was only just one-way video. It was like the, the guy was talking to you, and, and the compliance is not so good. It's much better to have a burning bush when you're talking to somebody than it is to actually have this voice come out because they think that they have lost their marbles. Telesepsis impact. Uh, this was a spin. Yeah, other organization, which may be, in some cases, a system. Uh, Dr. Hill could speak to, but also could be independent. He pointed out to me the other day, never, well, just because they have to be a part of the system doesn't mean we get to tell them what to do. So can you address this, this side of it, about walk, working across these organizational boundaries to, to provide a seamless service that involves different administrative structures, different medical structures, different IT structures? No, I, I, uh, I think it's a good segue going into the collaboration, but also the team care uh, aspects of things. And that this is not something that comes naturally to physicians. Uh, they're trained to be independent. They're, they're almost uh, uh, trained to be uh, uh, so wholly independent that they won't listen uh, around uh, to those who, are, who aren't physicians giving them advice. Having said that, though, I think that that's changing rapidly uh, as, is, as is telehealth. And it is a, it is a, a, a team aspect. Uh, but it will be that change that, that finally, I think, uh, uh, drives care where it used to be, and it goes back to my point before, uh, and, and it was just made that this is that this is about growing the village, this is about keeping people in their neighborhoods, keeping people at home. Uh, hospital's not a place to be, uh, it's a, a dangerous place to be, and, and I think in order to bring the physician, the physician uh, which there is a shortage of, to the communities, it, 